hey guys welcome back to my channel this is the second video on enzymes if you haven't watched the first part please do head over and watch it today i'll speak about the kinetics of enzyme catalysis so different enzymes show different responses to changes in substrate concentration temperature and ph we'll start with substrate concentration so the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction it increases with substrate concentration until a maximal velocity which is denoted as v max is reached normally enzymes uh, show a hyperbolic curve as uh, shown by the blue lines but allosteric enzymes which i'll speak about in my in another video they show sigmoid curves you need to know the difference now moving on to the temperature so the reaction velocity increases as you increase the temperature this is because of increased number of molecules having sufficient energy to pass over the energy barrier or the activation energy and form the products of the reaction. But further elevation of temperature results in a decrease in the velocity because of temperature-induced denaturation of the enzyme. Optimum temperature for enzymes mainly is 35 to 40 degrees. Moving on to the pH, extremes can lead to denaturation of the enzyme as well, so it affects the ionization of the active site present on the enzyme. For example, pepsin, uh, which is a digestive enzyme in the stomach, is maximally active at pH 2, but other enzymes might be denatured at this pH. Okay, now we'll move on to an equation called the michaelis menten equation. I think that's how you pronounce it. So from our first video, we're going to uh, take the same reaction. So E plus S, which is enzyme plus substrate, is equal to the enzyme substrate complex or the transition state is equal to the enzyme plus the product. Now what you need to know that we have Ks and the Ks are rate constants. So we have from the substrate to the transition state, we have K1. Then from the transition state to the actual result uh, resultant, the product is K2. And then the backward reaction. So the K1 is the forward reaction. And the K2, uh, K, sorry, minus 1, is the backward reaction because it's a reversible reaction. So you know you, the equation is such that V0, which is the initial reaction velocity, is equal to V max, which, as I said, is the maximal velocity, um, the S is the substrate concentration over the Km, which is Michaelis constant. The Michaelis constant is equal to the forward reactions divided by the backward. Um, so K1 plus K2 divided by K minus 1. The Km uh, shows the Vmax halved. So it's like a half-life, for example. So Km plus S again, which is the substrate constant. This is the graph. You can see that Km is half of Vmax and enzyme 1 has a smaller Km than enzyme 2 and Km shows the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate. So the smaller the Km, the higher the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate. Now let's talk about inhibition. So any substance that can diminish the velocity, velocity of an enzyme catalyzed reaction is called an inhibitor, right? It stops. The enzyme. So we have um, a few types. So we have reversible inhibitors, which typically bind to the enzymes through non-covalent bonds. So these bonds are not as strong, so they can break easily. And then we have irreversible inhibitors, which form, which bind to enzymes with covalent bonds. Then you have two types of inhibition. So you have competitive inhibition. They bind reversibly to the same site that the substrate would normally occupy. So the competing would the substrate for that site. Now what you need to remember for each type of inhibition is what happens to the Vmax and what happens to the Km. So for competitive inhibition, the Vmax is not affected. Vmax will only increase by increasing the substrate concentration, but with competitive inhibition there's no effect. Km, on the other hand, is increased. Uh, examples of competitive inhibition are statins, which inhibit HMG-CoA reductase, which, is, uh, which inhibits cholesterol synthesis. Then you have non-competitive inhibition. They bind at different sites on the enzyme, so they can either bind the free enzyme or the enzyme substrate complex. It depends. What they do to the Vmax is they decrease the maximal velocity, and Km here is constant or it is not affected. 
Examples include lead, binding to the side chains and proteins, or certain insecticides affecting the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. Some other examples of enzyme inhibitors include beta-lactam antibiotics like penicillin and amoxicillin. That is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in my next one. Bye. Da, 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 da.